Hi all, welcome to Discord Brigham 2020 demo session. I am John Joseph, postdoctoral fellow working with Dr. Nizin Joshi and Professor Jeffrey Karp at Brigham and Women's Hospital. Today, we will showcase our work based on a nasal spray that prevents the entry of respiratory pathogens through the nasal route. The demo session will be conducted in three cycles. Feel free to, feel free to submit the questions through the chat window and I'll be happy to answer them at end of each demo. If I'm unable to attend any questions, please use the demo page and I can address them after the event. Every year, the outbreak of seasonal flu causes a serious global threat that affects all countries with an estimated 1 billion cases and a half a million deaths. These viral pathogens are emerging with an increasing frequency and have a devastating impact worldwide, leading to an economic burden. The past 20 years shows that a future pandemic is unpredictable and unavoidable, making us vulnerable, especially until a new vaccine is developed. This would typically take any time between two to four years or even more. The major route of viral transmission occurs through large respiratory droplets, typically above five microns. When a person cough or sneeze, these droplets mainly enter through the inhalation route via the nasal cavity. The viral attachment and its fusion occurred through cells and receptors located in the ciliated epithelium and go blood cells. These receptors are more profoundly seen in the nasal lining than the oral cavity. And our experience with these pathogens have shown up major deficits in how we deal globally with emerging pathogens. The current pandemic also taught us the importance of a preventive approach that needs to be addressed for dealing with future pandemic. The use of face masks and respirators offer indisputable protection against the transmission of respiratory pathogens. However, there are potential risks associated with the use of mask. Importantly, the filtration efficiency of a mask is compromised by the improper face fit that creates gap and leakages. The prolonged use of mask can significantly affect the efficiency by saturation of filter mesh. Owing to these limitations, we were thinking of a possible platform for pro providing an additional protective layer that traps the virus. The nasal cavity has the innate ability to trap large airborne particles due to, due to the narrow passage that enhances the surface area. The intricate anatomy slows down and disrupts the laminar airflow, promoting eddy currents that facilitate the deposition of the particle. These, the, the deposition of these particles in the nasal cavity is predominantly governed by forces such as inertial impaction, gravitational force, and mucosal attrition. Though the nasal cavity functions as body's own face mask, unfortunately, the virus-infected respiratory droplets trap trapped in the nasal cavity become the primary source of in infection. This enlightened and motivated us to develop a nasal spray that maximizes the characteristic features of the nasal cavity to capture larger droplets and also simultaneously deactivate them as a prophylactic approach. And hence, we adopted a strategy to prevent oil transmission by spraying an aqueous formulation using a pocket-sized nasal device that leads to a uniform coating in the nasal cavity. The aqueous spray transforms into a formulation barrier upon contact with nasal fluid. This hydrogel can capture and trap the particles from the inhaled air and also prevent the entry into the nasal lining due to the unique barrier property of the formulation. In addition to containing the virus, the components of the formulation are also able to deactivate the virus within a few minutes of capture. Eventually, the formulation will be cleared by innate mucus clearance mechanism and will be eliminated from the body through the digestive route in three to four hours. The nasal gel also encourages nose breathing and offers better protection when eating in restaurants or flight when the mask is off. It is imperative to note that our platform is a drug-free nasal spray that do not use any prescription drugs or any, fact, any active pharmaceutical ingredients to kill the virus. 
our strategy has been designed in such a way that it can be easily integrated into daily life. The formulation is dispensed using a pocket-sized nasal spray device for daily use. The formulation inactivates the virus and also retains in the nasal cavity for up to four hours for prolonged protection and for better user compliance. Apart from the functional characteristics, the formulation is biocompatible, non-irritant, and is meant not to hinder the sensory functions of the nasal cavity. It's also important to note that all the individual components of the formulation are grass listed and are present at levels recommended for nasal application by the FDA guidelines. All these would facilitate a rapid translation to a safe and an effective nasal spray as over-the-counter consumer product. Next, we move to the demo session. Here, we will perform an experiment to determine the actual surface area coverage of spray formulation in the nasal cavity and then visualize the regions where the droplets are being captured. To demonstrate this experiment, we use a transparent nasal cavity model. This model will provide a comprehensive understanding towards the effectiveness of formulation in capturing the respiratory droplets from the inhaled air. So to begin with, the nasal cavity is connected to an apparatus that mimics the standard breathing pattern of an adult human. The air enters through the nose and exits through the throat as represented in the video. To visualize the deposition of spray formulation, the, nasal, the inner nasal cavity is coated with a colorless dye, which undergoes a color change in presence of moisture. The formulation is then sprayed in the nasal cavity with one actuation per nostril. The water present in the formulation causes a color reaction, and the deposition of the spray can be visualized by the purple color change. And the next part of the study deals with the ability of the formulation to capture respiratory droplets from inhaled air. To perform this part of the experiment, we expose the nasal cavity with artificially created respiratory, respiratory droplets, which are made by a droplet generator. The entire setup is housed in an enclosed chamber. So five minutes of exposure to the respiratory droplets resulted in a particle capture, which can be visualized by the blue overlay. The prolonged use of another 10 minutes further increased the particle capture. The three different views of the transparent nasal cavity shows the effectiveness of the formulation in capturing particles from the inhaled air. The majority of the regions in the nasal cavity are covered with a purple color, which indicates a high degree of formulation coverage. The blue color depicts the particles captured with the formulation in the anterior region and superior turbinate of the nasal cavity. The particles which are not captured by the formulation and that gets deposited in the nasal cavity appears green in color. But there is no significant regions which are green in the nasal cavity. And then we quantified the particle capture uh, using the same cavity model. And for the first time, we show that a nasal formulation can capture respiratory droplets from the inhaled air. Our formulation captured particles five times more efficiently compared to the control group without the formulation. And then we also performed the plaque assay to check the antiviral activity of the formulation. The results confirmed that the formulation completely deactivated the influenza virus within 10 minutes of contact. The next step is to evaluate the, efficiency, the efficacy of the formulation against different strains of coronavirus and finally in SARS-CoV-2 as well. We are currently working on evaluating the nasal spray in animal models. And uh, with this, we conclude the demo. And uh, I would also like to thank, I would like to thank my supervisors, Professor Jeffrey Carr and Dr. Nidin Joshi for their valuable inputs and suggestions to drive the project. I would like to express my gratitude to all collaborators, especially Dr. Johannes and his team and CARP lab members for working with us. I acknowledge Stepping Strong for funding this project 
and Brigham and Women's Hospital for bestowing us with an opportunity to showcase, to showcase our work. 